I can hear the sound of a great and mighty army marching upon the horizon. It is an army of God's daughters coming to claim their inheritance. For a war has been unleashed against the family in this hour. A war on our children, where hell-inspired indoctrinations have been spreading and infiltrating schools, high schools, universities, and now the government. If the enemy has not been able to kill our children in the womb, he's been attempting to destroy their God-given identity by way of their young minds. There has been an increased war against women, both an attack on our wombs, the fruit of our wombs, and an attack against our God-given identity as daughters and mothers. We have ideologies being pushed that blur the lines between man and woman, and men are being told that masculinity is a modern-day evil. Human trafficking has increased, and things like pedophilia that were once considered evil yesterday are being slowly accepted as an identity. Demon-filled theories are running rampant. A veil of darkness has been spread across the land. But God has an answer. Deborah, arise. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Rise up in splendor and be radiant, for your light has dawned. Look carefully, darkness blankets the earth, and thick gloom covers the nations. But Yahweh arises upon you, and the brightness of his glory appears over you. In Judges 5 verse 7, we find the prophetess and judge, Deborah. She sings these words, Village life ceased. It ceased in Israel until I, Deborah, arose. Arose a mother in Israel. The NIV translation puts it like this, Villages in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose. Until I arose a mother in Israel. God is calling you, his daughter, to arise and fight. He is releasing the mantle of Deborah upon you as you step into this calling. It is a mantle of courage and boldness to stand fiercely against the enemy and stand guard over our families. In Judges 4, the Israelites had partnered with evil. As such, the people were handed over to an immoral king, Jabin, whose name means God perceives. This speaks to me of the eye of God Almighty, piercing, perceiving, and exposing all the corruption that has been covered in secret. Right now, that corruption is being brought to the surface for all to see. Isaiah 29, 15. Woe to those who dig deep to hide their plans from the Lord. In darkness, they do their works and say, who will see us? And who will know? King Jabin appointed an evil commander of his army named Sisera, who lived in Harasheth. Sisera's name means meditations and keen and swift. This commander oppressed the people of Israel brutally. Sisera lived in a place that meant silencing of the Gentiles and carving of the nations. It points to the silencing of today's church and the carving or redefining of the nations as a result of these meditations. Today, Sisera is a principality. We are witnessing this principality move keenly and swiftly to oppose Christ. God's daughters, however, they will not be silenced. They are moving with the courageous mantle of Deborah to tear down this principality. Deborah was known as a prophetess. She would sit under a palm tree between Ramah and Bethel. A palm tree in the Bible signifies providence, divine wisdom, and intelligence from the Lord. It is an opposite way of thinking to the world's meditations. The location of this palm tree between Ramah and Bethel means heights of the house of God. Deborah sat in the heights of intimacy, in the secret place with God, and therefore received divine revelation and insights from him. 
Because of her position of intimacy with the Lord, Deborah released his insights to the earth around her and it settled the disputes of the people. God is seeking out his daughters who will choose to come up higher into the heights of the house of God, higher above the noise, higher above the confusion, where they can listen clearly to his voice. In this place of intimacy, he is releasing divine solutions and strategies that will counteract the noise and confusion and meditations of the world. They are divine strategies that we need right now. Deborah responds to the oppression of Jabin and Sisera and summons Barak. Barak's name means lightning. I believe this speaks of fathers arising alongside mothers to defend and protect the family together. And in doing so, God will quickly respond with lightning power to strike the principality of Sisera. I'm not speaking of only physical mothers and fathers, but spiritual ones. Deborah instructs Barak, go deploy the troops on Mount Tabor. Tabor means place of purifying and cleansing. The troops first had to gather at this place of purifying and cleansing before going into battle. God is purifying his armies in this moment. He is gathering his sons and his daughters to first purify and cleanse us of the noise, the lies, and the oppression that we have endured. Deborah then prophesied a God-inspired strategy. She said in Judges 4 verse 7, Then I will lure Sisera's armies to fight against you at the Wadi Kushon, and I will hand Sisera and his armies over to you. However, she then tells Barak that Sisera himself will be given into the hands of a woman. The Wadi Kishon is interesting. It means waters of snaring. The Spirit of God is releasing strategies in prayer in this moment that will lure and trap the enemy into the rushing waters of his spirit, drowning out the enemy's plans, his chattering words and his confusing doctrines. As God's sons and daughters continue to decree the truth of his word with courage, it will drown out every demon ideology that is attempting to advance and set up residence over our family territories. Pay attention to the strategies that the Holy Spirit is releasing to you in this moment through dreams, visions, and in His Word. These are strategies He is inviting us to partner with to strike the enemy, to strike the ground, and keep striking until we see that rock of stubborn resistance break. The Lord is giving the principality of Sisera into the hands of his daughters in this moment. Satan has overplayed his hand. He has targeted our wombs and the fruit of our wombs. He has targeted our families. So God is raising up his daughters as weapons and antidotes to the enemy's strategies. As Sisera's armies were lured into battle with Barak and his armies, it tells us in Judges 4 verse 15, that when Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and warriors into a panic. Sisera leaped down from his chariot and escaped on foot. Sisera fled in terror into the camp of Jael. Jael means one who ascends or mountain goat. She is the prophetic picture of one who ascends the heights of the house of God, just like the picture of Deborah under the palm tree. Mountain goats have the ability to climb high above their enemies, out of reach of their predators as they balance on rocky ledges. Jael, knowing who stood before her, allures Sisera into her tent. Thinking he was safe, Sisera lays down to rest, and asking for a drink of water, she gives him milk, lulling him into a deep sleep. Jael first covers Sisera with her blanket, and then, in a swift move of striking courage, she grabs a tent peg and a hammer and drives the peg like a nail through Sisera's forehead and into the ground. And so he dies. Jael's tent points to the tabernacle, the sanctuary of God, 
Rather than doing warfare outside of the secret place, she invited her enemy into her territory, as though luring a predator up to the heights, knowing that only she could withstand the atmosphere there. She lures him in, gives him milk, a picture of the sustenance of the word of God, lulling him into a state of unconsciousness. She covers him with her blanket, a picture of the glory of God, and then she reaches for her tent peg and hammer. The hammer is a picture of the word of God. Jeremiah 23, 29, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock into pieces. The peg is a prophetic picture of territory. Isaiah 54 verse 2, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not hold back. Lengthen your ropes and strengthen your pegs. She drove her tent peg down deep into the temple of Sisera, striking him with the word of God in the very place where those meditations had set up territory in the mind. Jael took back her territory. She grabbed her weapon of war, her tent peg and her hammer, and the glory of God. And she drove that tent peg down into the meditations that had been redefining the nations. I can hear the voice of the Father in this hour saying, Daughter, come. It's time to pick up your weapons of war. Pick up my word. It is time to come to the front lines. Come, climb with me into the heights of my sanctuary, my secret place. Come and acclimatize to my atmosphere. I long to give you the secrets of my heart. I long to give you the solutions and strategies that the earth is needing right now. Come and breathe afresh with me up here. Let's wage war together on the enemy who has been attempting to set up territory over my family and my children. It is time to take back your ground. Let us lure him into our sanctuary. Let us take him into a place where he thinks he's safe. But I will release to you strategies in prayer that will cover over his demon ideologies, rendering him into a state of unconsciousness. Daughter, do not hold back in fear in this hour. Reach for the hammer of my word and drive it down deep into the temple of those meditations. Proclaim my word boldly and loudly for all to hear. It will re-establish your territory over these ideologies. They are not from me, and therefore they cannot and will not prevail against you. Deborah's name means a bee, or one who speaks. She points to a colony of bees, not one, but many. An army of daughters rising fiercely to boldly proclaim the truth of the word of God in this hour. Her words release the sweet honey of Jesus, while together swarming and attacking the enemy's plans. She defends her hive and will attack any enemy that threatens her territory with a deathly sting. I can hear the gates of hell shrieking at the sound of of this approaching army. Hell cannot stop what is coming. Here they come, can you hear them? God's daughters of Zion, a mighty army of beauty and strength. They are coming over the mountains like a mother bear with resolve in her eyes to protect her young, to restore the family, redeem the unborn and retrieve the lost prodigals. They are coming to pour out the sweet fragrance of Jesus into the earth. Here they come, warriors and nurturers, soldiers and protectors. They are fierceness, love and strength combined. God is calling you daughter, a charge to arise as a mother over the land, a charge to arise and take back the territory that you have been assigned. You are the spiritual protectors nurturers and defenders over your families. Village life as we have known it has been ceasing, but watch as God's Deborahs arise like a cloak spreading across the nations. This divine calling from heaven is resting upon a generation of daughters in this hour. 
they will courageously and fearlessly push back the darkness and expose it to the light. Psalm 68, 11, God Almighty declares the word of the gospel with power and the warring women of Zion deliver its message. I can feel the ground shaking as these daughters march together in unison, sending shockwaves into the enemy's camp, for they come to retrieve their territory. Here they come. Can you hear them? The daughters of God with fire in their eyes. They burn with passion for their beloved, and they are moving in response to his call. His call is one of urgency, like a drum beating with the sounds of war, whose notes are echoing out across the four corners of the earth. His voice calls out to his daughters, Rise up, my daughters, rise up. I am releasing the mantle of Deborah and the mantle of Esther to rest upon you as you step into my calling in this hour. This is your moment. I am giving your enemies into your hands. In one hand, they are holding the sword of the Spirit, and in the other, they are holding the blood of the Lamb. They are moving to the sound of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who is roaring behind them. They have come to rebuild the ancient ruins, to repair the cities destroyed, to revive and redeem the devastations of many generations. Now you are ready, my bride, to come with me, as we climb the highest peaks together. Together, we will wage war in the lion's den and the leopard's lair. Song of Songs 4 verse 8. I want to pray over you. Stretch out your hands, daughter, for I see the Holy Spirit releasing the mantle of Deborah into your hands. It is a mantle of courage and boldness. I see a flame flickering in your spirit. It is going to burn brighter and brighter as you begin to step out in courage and boldness. Do not hold back. Just as JL drove that tent peg deep down into the very meditations that had set up territory, I see you stepping into your divine appointment, your divine calling where the Holy Spirit is saying, rise up, step up, speak out in this moment, daughter, speak out. And you're going to drive that tent peg deep down into the meditations of the earth where the enemy has been trying to set up territory, not only over your own life, not only over your family, but over your territory in this moment. Your territory where you live is where God has appointed you for this moment, for this hour. You are here for a reason, daughter. You are here with purpose. I just rebuke every single lie that has come against your voice in this hour. I come against every single demon ideology that has told you to be silent and to be still. The Holy Spirit is releasing upon you courage in this moment to step into this calling of Deborah. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are called, you are appointed, and you are anointed for this moment in time. Village life ceased. It ceased in Israel until I Deborah arose, arose a mother in Israel. Rise up, mothers. Rise up, Deborah. Rise up. 